This is a ghost. An image of something long dead. In the 1950s, the Avro Arrow was the most advanced fighter jet in the world. The pride of a generation. The passion of 14,000 highly skilled workers trying to cut a new path through the sky. This innovative team would work together for years to create technology that had never been seen before. Only to have all their hard work, hopes, and dreams utterly destroyed in one day. A day that would be remembered as Black Friday. At the time, the, uh, the big threat to North America was the uh, huge number of Russian bombers, uh, you know, coming across the Arctic, the shortest route to the United States, and, um, you know, armed with nuclear bombs, armed with conventional bombs. Uh, they could have been either one. But Canada, like other Western nations, didn't have aircraft that could defend against that possibility. So they knew that in order to be able to defend the country, you had to have a supersonic aircraft. So the RCAF made a request in 1954. Uh, they laid out some standards for an airplane that they, you know, that they felt that they needed. What the Royal Canadian Air Force called for was an interceptor aircraft with a crew of two. With twin engines, it would have to fly at an altitude of 50,000 feet or 15,000 meters and break the sound barrier. But really what it needed to do was to be able to get from their air bases, which would, for, for example, be North Bay, Ontario, get up over the Arctic as fast as physically possible. So you're flying, um, you know, accelerate up to supersonic speeds, have a dash speed, get to the targets, launch their missiles, and then be able to get back to the base, reload and refuel, and get back out again to be able to catch a second wave if they were coming. Uh, we were part of NORAD. Uh, and the, with the US, we shared defense of, of North America. And uh, at that time, we were flying our own CF-100s, uh, which were a subsonic, heavy, long-range airplane. And the Americans were flying similar airplanes. and. When the bomber threat became more real, then we say we need to be bigger and faster and heavier. Well, the Americans were working on airplanes, but what was flying at that time didn't have the range or didn't have the payload. Um, so you could get speed, but no payload. So that was how come the Canadian Air Force said, we need an airplane that can do these, these things. It can fly at, at least Mach 1.5 and maneuver and have a range of five, 600 miles at, at supersonic speed and carry enough missiles to make sure you pack, take down three or four bombers. The reason the Arrow was in fact built and designed and built in Canada and why they didn't go buy one was because there wasn't another airplane that would do the job. It was a tall order at the time, especially for a company that had never built a supersonic aircraft before. Fortunately, A.V. Rowe had a team of bright young engineers. Stan Porter was one of them. I graduated at Uni University of BC in 1954, and I knew when I graduated I wanted to design mechanical things. So that in me, to be creative design was important. Uh, and I had heard of Avro aircraft when I was a student, but I thought that aircraft stuff, that's, that's for big, for hot shots. Well, I hired on and I was doing things that uh, were just fantastic to be able to be given assignments, have some, some responsibility, and these people encouraged me. The aircraft uh, was built by, an, in, in some ways, an international consortium because you had people coming after World War II had ended, uh, people were coming from all over the world to work at this young company called Avro Canada. Uh, they were young engineers who may have been frustrated with their positions in England or there was no jobs for them. And uh, certainly through Eastern Europe too. So you had a, quite a mix of people working on this aircraft. One of the challenges was building a brand new aircraft from the ground up. There was a brand new engine, there was a brand new airframe, there was brand new missile system, there was brand new missile guidance system. That had never been done before and I don't think it's ever been done since. What? this airplane represents is state-of-the-art uh, but it was an excellent mix of learning uh, and observing what had been done before in aircraft and supersonic aircraft in particular and 
incorporating these by clever design. So it starts off that these are bits of information of knowledge that you can adapt. The project took off in 1955 when the Canadian government gave the AV Row Company $260 million, which is equivalent to $2 billion today. The company had its marching orders, build five prototypes and subject them to rigorous testing on the ground and in the air. Then, produce 35 planes to go into service as soon as possible. The Western nations were in a tense competition with the Soviet Union to develop new military aviation technology. So the creation of the Avro Arrow was a classified government operation. It was very secret and you did your job and you were told what you needed to know to do your job. Um, but if you didn't need to know, then better you not know about secrets. I worked in, in doing design of test rigs. I started out with the test rigs for the uh, hydraulic jacks that run the elevators and ail runs and the arrow. I didn't know what the arrow was. I knew it was a supersonic airplane. That's all I knew. But it wasn't long. And my boss said, listen, Stan, if you're going to be designing this stuff, and by this time, of course, I'd talked to the designers of the hardware. If you're testing it, you have to know what it is you're testing. And, and they said, you better go and look at the airplane. So they got me the special security clearance. And I went over to the closed-in hangar where the, uh, I opened the door. And I, I, I couldn't believe my eyes, really. This is this marvelous, streamlined, huge white airplane, um, like the frontiers of science. And I thought, my god, you know, me working on something like that, it, it really was mind-blowing to see this magnificent. It was. It was, it was a fantastic thing to see. What he saw was an innovative design that was as simple as it was sophisticated. With powerful jet engines combined with lightweight magnesium and titanium materials to keep weight down, the Arrow was expected to be the fastest fighter in the world. It was very advanced, but in other ways, it was very, very, um, just keep it simple. And uh, you know, you had one of the very first fly-by-wire systems in this aircraft. You had the ability to, uh, to attain you know, incredible speeds. 